All right, so we're here with uh, James Milkey, the former editor-in-chief of <laughs> 1UP and EGM, uh, now producer on Luminous. Um, and he actually is a little bit jet-lagged. He flew in just from Very, Japan just for this interview. Just for this. Um, but uh, yeah, we just wanted to uh, chat with you since, you know, since the last time we were working together at 1UP and EGM. So kind of wanted to find out like what it's like now on mm -hmm. the other side of the business, actually making games. Like, yeah, I'm sure only, you've been asked this a lot, but yeah. Not only have you made physical appearance changes, <laughs> but you are now a Japanese developer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A game launched. What's How's, it like to be a Japanese yeah. developer? If, uh, it feels really shorter. <laughs> it feels really shorter, and my command of the English language has completely slipped. <laughs> so really? that, those yeah. are the biggest changes. What was it like making that list? I mean, I know you forced what us list? to listen to right. the music. I'm sorry, yeah. the music uh -oh. list. Well, but I'll tell you, tell you like, when I that. first saw the uh, soundtrack for yeah. Luminous on Vita, it was basically, I was like, shit, this is the stuff that Milky's been playing in his office, <laughs> blasting in his office at, back at EGM. Uh, you know, so it's kind of like, it's actually kind of a, yeah, it brought me back, actually, quite yeah. a bit. I mean, what was it like pulling all those different acts? Because it wasn't just like, you know, today's electronic music. You kind of went back quite a bit. So you want the yeah. serious answer, right? Not yeah. the jackass answer. Whatever. Okay. Well, <laughs> well Pulling that list together, you know, it, it wasn't just the songs that you see on the uh, on the on the playlist. We had to put together a list of about 300 submissions because we weren't sure what was going to come through. We weren't sure what was going to be cleared, what was going to be approved. Some artists are fine with letting their music be licensed for games. Other artists um, don't want their music licensed for games. Yeah. So we had to have backups. And then once we found out what tracks we could work with we had to arrange them in an order that made some sort of like logical sense within the game. So it was actually quite a bit of work to put all that stuff together, but because I really have spent a lot of time listening to all of this music across the electronic genre, you know, I wanted to put together something that was diverse and that would um, please a lot of people, but not be so, you know, I guess wide ranging that, you know, people who love electronic music would listen to this and only like a couple songs. Right, we, right. we really wanted them to, you know, somebody to sit down and enjoy everything. So what, what do you think is, like, for you personally, what was, like, the, the greatest get or, you know, that you were most proud of to have in the game? Or just, like, some tracks that you're like, shit, yeah, I got that in. Well, in the, thing that, the thing that was a real big relief for me personally was to get that Orbital track, Never, which you actually turned me on to. Yeah. Uh, you know, you sent, I woke up one day and you sent me a link <laughs> via Twitter. Yeah, and you know, I was like, all excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I, and sure. I didn't know because you, you, you saw it, the incident went up, and I woke up and, because I wanted to get Orbital into the game. Yeah. But after going through all of their back catalog, you know, it was so hard to pick. We were like, well, what do we do? Do we pick something from the Brown album? Do we pick something from Middle of Nowhere or Snibilization? But all of those songs felt so familiar that I, I really wanted something fresh. And literally less than two weeks before we had to finalize and nail down the track list, which we'd been working on for over six months, Wow. Orbital put out their new yeah. song, Never. And um, one thing I learned was that music licensing takes a long time. So with the amount of time we had left, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to get never in yeah. time. Yeah. We had cleared another song by Orbital, which was um, their song Style, mm -hmm. but um, when I heard Never, it was just so beautiful. Yeah. It starts off and it really builds into that roaring kind of full-on Orbital driving percussion track and everything, but it's still a beautiful song, so we really wanted that. The whole team wanted it, and then we contacted Orbital through multiple channels, and then we got that song turned around in like record time. Wow. And uh, maybe in under like three or four days, we, we got that song cleared. Nice. So I'm really happy about that one. Yeah. I'm just curious to know how you feel now, like being on the other side, doing all these press tours and stuff. You, you know, you used to write reviews and, and it was actually kind of funny when you used to like slam your door and like scream and stuff because, <laughs> you know, you had to get coverage for the magazine. Like, what does it feel like now? Well, you know, the, whatever job you're doing, there's going to be a certain level of stress involved if you're trying to do it well, I think. And, you know, it is a nice change of pace to be able to go from one stress to another because when I was um, an editor on a website in a magazine, you know, I was mm -hmm. constantly critiquing other people's work. Mm -hmm. But as an artist myself, I find more satisfaction in, in creating things. You know, we were creating websites and we were creating magazines, so that was satisfying. But um, being able to make a game 
um, being able to talk about it, being able to talk about what your dreams and what your inspirations are. It's it's a hugely satisfying endeavor. So I you know it's so what was what was it like kind of you know seeing those first reviews come in. The re seeing the reviews come in, I mean, there's the, that's always like your kind of hold your breath moment. It's like, okay, the game's out, the guys have review <laughs> code, you know, what are the scores going to be like? And I'm lucky, you know, I, I worked on Child of Eden, which got really high scores, but the scores for, for Luminous have been like universally high across the board. We were hoping that we would hover in an in 8 out of 10 range. We didn't know whether people would appreciate the work we put in or if they would just say, oh, it's just another Luminous, or they would misunderstand some of the features and some of our intentions, but everybody seems to really have gotten it. I mean, IGN's review was, was really glowing. Structoid's review was really glowing. They, they really got into the granular stuff and they really showed that they understood the game. So that was, that was satisfying because we did everything deliberately. So right now, I think on Metacritic, we're the, we're the highest rated original title for Vita. Yeah, which yeah. is yeah. huge for us, yeah. you know. So the whole the whole team, like, we're we're so happy. I know Mizuguchi San is really proud. I think uh, I was telling Tina or something. I was like, oh shit, here we go again. I'm gonna buy another Sony <laughs> for Luminous. You know? Yeah, but, uh, that's what a lot of people have told yeah. us, and you know, the feedback that we've gotten so far, you know, even before mm -hmm. the Vita launched, people were sending us pictures of of Luminous Electronic Symphony. They're like, I've got the game. I'm just waiting for the system. Right, you know, right. That, my like, Luminous player? Yeah, it's my Luminous player. My yeah, first yeah. Luminous player, yeah, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's really an honor to see people actually holding up copies of your game and, you know, you know that the work, the uh, the effort yeah. was worth it. Now, on the, uh, the Vita itself, I mean, I know you've been sort of a fan or proponent of it, like, kind of all along, you know. I mean, how, what do you think about the platform's kind of chances for success? What do you see them doing well? Uh, what do you think Sony might need to do to kind of, you know, move it forward even further? I think people just have to keep things in perspective. Before, um, before, uh, so, uh, before Nintendo dropped the price on the 3DS, you know, everybody was talking about what the eventual price for the Vita would be. You know, they hadn't announced the price when they first announced it, and um, you know, people thought, oh, all that technology, that beautiful screen, all that stuff that they've got going on, it's going to have to cost at least 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. But when they announced that it was only 250 or $300, depending on the model you bought, you know, everybody was really impressed that they managed to get the price down that low. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, for the Wi-Fi version, that's pretty reasonable considering what you're holding in your hand. Right. You know, I'm old enough to remember, unfortunately, like when, <laughs> you know, those like portable like Watchmen, the TVs, like Sony's, you know, those things were amazing. We, I could never have even imagined when I was like 18, 19, 20, that I could hold something that's like an HD TV in my hand, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. the, all the technology that's in there. So that there's nothing wrong with that system. It's like you can complain if that, all right, I got to buy a separate memory card, but whatever, it's just part <laughs> of today's technology. But, you know, the only thing that's going to hold Sony back from succeeding with the Vita, in my opinion, is, is having the right games. And one of the benefits yeah. of, of working on the developer side in, the, in Japan is that I, I know for a fact that they've got some games that when they announce them, people are going to be, they're going to forget about all the problems that cool. they're imagining with the Vita. Mm -hmm. It's actually really funny too because I kind of had like a mild interest in the Vita and then when I knew your game was coming out on it, I really wanted to try it out and now I have one in the office. It's a lot of fun. Well, I'm glad that you, yeah. glad that you were <laughs> so motivated to, to play the game that you bought a Vita. But I think yeah. beyond Luminous, you're going you're gonna to have plenty of reasons to yeah. the game on the system. I don't system. know, yeah. I've now, had a couple of games at games. Now, called. how about like, um, you know, one thing that's interesting to me maybe is like what's your kind of perspective now on... You know, it's the gaming landscape in general, and you know, we've got you know Nintendo Wii U coming out this year, and the next the other systems coming out, you know, next year, things like that. Um, you know, and specifically because you're you know embedded in the Japanese development community, like what what do you what are you seeing? What what kind of where where do you think mm. people are going to start like you know putting their development resources and just sort of in general, you know, where do you see it all kind of going? Well. Obviously, you can still have a lot of success on consoles, um, you know, whether it's the 3DS, whether it's the Vita, whether it's the Wii, PS3, Wii yeah. U coming up, doesn't doesn't really matter. As long as the title is high quality and the audience is in the right frame of mind for this kind of game, you can succeed. But um, more and more of the development dollars, you know, people are, everybody's seeing all the 
development dollars going into the social scene, you know, so there's companies like Gree and Mobagay and DNA, and they're making $50 million a month with like these like crazy little like, you know, right. Farmville style games or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that has to be attractive to everybody. So, you know, I see Nintendo spending a lot of time trying to intercept Vita things. Like they always announce like a press conference on the right. launch of Vita Day, whatever. You know, and that's fine, but I think, you know, all Japanese companies have bigger things to worry about. They should be worrying about, like, how is Apple doing what they're doing? Mm -hmm. What's happening in the Android space? they got to stop looking so inward mm -hmm. to what, you know, the, the traditional business models, and they got to really start thinking, you know, Nintendo, for example, can't just try and catch up to what Sony's doing on PSN or what Microsoft's been doing on XBLA mm -hmm. for the last yeah. eight years. You know, they, they need to... They need to take it a step further. They can't just try and catch up. So, you know, that's going to be important to everybody surviving in the future. So then what's, uh, like, finally, like, what, what's the game or games that you're most looking forward to right now? Well, I'm looking forward. I just picked up Kingdoms of Amalur, Amalur. And, I, and Twisted Metal, so I'm looking forward to going back home and playing those. But as far as games that aren't out yet, I'm really looking forward to Last Guardian whenever that gets done. Yeah. Um, I just saw the trailer for Borderlands 2, and that looks really oh, cool. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm excited about that. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's, like, tons, but I'm so jet-lagged, I can't remember what what else is coming out. These, oh, you know, Bioshock yeah. Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, there, there's so ma there are so many games coming out and so little time to play them, it's, like, it's hard to figure out what I'm going to what I'm going to play. The thing that's going to really destroy my productivity is Diablo 3. <laughs> yeah. I, I played Diablo 2 like three I or four remember. years straight, yeah, I and I still pop it in <laughs> now and then, but Diablo 3 is going to be something else. So when do we see you next? Is it at E3? I don't know. Sometime soon. Some, you know, there's a yeah. lot of stuff happening in the, in the future, so hopefully I get back here sooner than later. All right. All right, man. Well, it was good. Great catching up. Yeah. yeah. Good to see you guys. All right. Thanks. <laughs>